Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Jackson Public School Board of Trustees February, uh, what date is it? 16th, 16th meeting. Uh, we thank you all for being here uh, this evening. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance that will be provided by the Middle School Division. Ms. Evans will introduce our student. Good evening. Good, evening. Good, evening. Good evening. To Dr. Gray, President Bird, school board members, and JPS supporters, it is my privilege to introduce People's Middle School scholar, Malik Matilda. Malik is a seventh grade scholar at People's Middle School where Dr. Carrie Gray serves as principal. He is the son of Mr. Tromaine and Mrs. Felicia McTilla. Malik believes that it is important to stay involved at school. Not only did he participate in the Take the Sting Out of Hunger canned food drive, he is also a member of the soccer team. His athletic prowess helps his school to be successful on the field and extends to his church, New Horizon, where Malik is a member of the basketball team. Upon graduating from high school with honors, Malik will attend Florida International University where he will study abstract art. Malik advises that he has a plan to become a billionaire and ultimately like will become CEO of his father's automotive business. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Malik McTiller. May you please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Malik. We'd like to present you a token of our appreciation. Board Member Jones will present it to you. Thank you so much and please keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. You're drinking milk if you're tall as I am, right? <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the, uh, uh, Dr. Gray and his staff, the faculty of Jackson Public Schools, um, board chair and board members, we want to present you with this expression of our uh, ex high expectations of you to come in the future because the billionaire is one of the things that we need more of individuals like you striving for. I really appreciate you. Is there anyone here with you that you want to recognize? Parents, friends, teachers? I'm an awesome dad. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome dad. Awesome dad. Yeah, dad. Yeah. Awesome dad. Thank you very much. You have an awesome kid. Awesome dad. Take this and have a photo taken. And Dad, thank you so much for what you're doing for us. You pick who you are. Our prayer of invocation this evening will be given by Dr. Robert West Sr. and his bio will be rendered by uh, our colleague, Mr. Jones. Okay. okay. Dr. West Senior, Robert West Sr., a native, a native Mississippian, received his formative education in Tunica County, Mississippi. He is the son of Mr. Steve and Ms. Henrietta, Henrietta Washington. Dr. West is an advocate for early childhood education. And in 1998, at the Mount Eva Baptist Church, Terry, Mississippi, he established the first child care center to serve the Terry community. He is a founding president of the New Foundation Theological Seminary in Terry, and is known locally and nationally for his work with a disadvantaged youth in the welfare system. He believes that the church is the center of the community and that, it, and that if communities and families are going to change, 
for the better, the change must come through the church. He is the founder of Fortune 500 churches and is a member of the larger clergy, concerned clergy of the Greater Jackson. He is founder of the Central Mississippi Ministerial Alliance and has participated in conferences and workshops all over the country as an advocate for children <coughs> languishing in foster care. Dr. West is the recipient of numerous awards for his work with children and families as well as for his, his work on social justice issues. In, in 2011, he received the Drum Major for Justice Award. Dr. West has been featured in numerous times in newspaper articles and on television for his work with One Church, One Child and his adoptive, adoption ministries. Dr. West is married to Dr. Linda West. He is the father of two children, Johnny and Robert West Jr. And he is the grandfather of Limbethany Grace West. He, has, he believes that things change when people agree to work together. And his motto is, we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened us. Philippians 4.13. Dr. West. Let us bow our heads, please. Giving honor to the school board, to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To our Heavenly Father, who looks down upon us this evening, we thank you for the blessings that you have given us. We thank you for the work that the school board is doing for our children and the parents and the teachers. And we ask your continued blessings upon them. Bless this meeting that it will be done in order and done for the good and for your purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. West. If you would wait for a second, and we'd like to present you with a token of our appreciation for your being here this evening. Dr. West, on behalf of the board of directors, Madam President, Dr. Gray, his faculty and staff, uh, the whole entire Jackson Public School system, I want to present you this uh, expression of our gratitude for you being here and also challenging us with those uh, words of uh, encouragement. Please accept this on behalf of that. Is anyone here you'd like to recognize her? Okay. All right. Well, please give our regards to Dr. West and let her know that we're thinking of her. And come see us when she gets a chance. All right. We'll get her. Here's a bag for you. I think you were use his umbrella yesterday, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. West. Thank you, Okay. We have established a quorum. All of our members are present and accounted for. I'll entertain a, motion, um, a motion for adoption of the agenda. Madam, Madam President, I, I just have a question about the uh, policy CHAA about um, postponing the vote on that due to comments that the uh, Academy ambassadors want to submit. That's it's item item F under consent agenda items in general. Okay, and what do you want to? Can you tell us a little bit about what, what you wanted? Yeah, the Academy Ambassadors are the young folks that Alignment Jackson, uh, United Way, and Operation Shoestring, and a number of other partners are working with, um, and they are currently learning how to do um, advocacy and a number of other things, and so they want to be able to um, submit comments around the wellness policy. Okay. All right, um, attorneys. Is there any um, is there um, any time limit on this? Did we not? Didn't we put it out for? Uh, yeah, no. It's, um, uh, it, it was just a late notice in finding out about it for um, this particular group. On, on our on our behalf. <laughs> Dr. If you're asking the, the attorneys if we comply with our own policies in terms of timeline, if so, I would urge we go ahead and adopt the agenda as is. And when that comes up, um, our colleague, 
present reasons why and what specifically, and then let the board decide at that time. All right. We'll now move to the, oh, uh, you, yes. You like hmm? I still need an adoption of the agenda. Um, Mr. Oppenheim, is that appropriate? Are you okay when we get to that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you know, I, I just didn't want to uh, belabor the conversation at that point, but that's fine if we wait until then. Okay. There might be some other comments around it when we get to it. Second. I'll entertain a motion for adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt today's agenda. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Reading and approving of the minutes of the February 2nd regular meeting. Madam President, Board of Trustees, for your consideration and approval of the minutes for February 2nd, 2016. So moved. Second. second. It's been moved and adopted that we, been moved and second that we adopt the February 2nd meeting minutes. Those in favor? Thank you. We're now down to public participation. Board members, you have one person who's requested to speak to you for public participation. Um, if I can understand the handwriting, I believe Mr. Thomas Cheatham would like to address you regarding baseball. Okay, Mr. Cheatham, you have three minutes, I believe. Where is he? He's coming. Oh, okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Superintendent Gray, ladies and gentlemen of Jackson Public School Board, and all these supporters. I'm here today to ask a couple of questions. <clears throat> My question is dealing with baseball in the city of Jackson. I need to know why that our middle school does not have not one senior school have a baseball team. I need to know why our high school does not have not one baseball field on that campus. Do you realize that baseball is played more than any sports in this country? There are more baseball players in this country than any other sport Rookie, triple-A, on and on and on. <clears throat> what hurt me so bad the other day, when the signing date was signed, not one Jackson Public School child signed a letter of intent. School board that hurt. I don't know how you feel about it, but we have neglected our children. We have let them down. So I wish that the school board can look at organizing middle school baseball. You know, when these children go to these surrounding school and they see these other fields, they come back and ask questions. Why we can't play on facilities like that? That hurt me. That ought to hurt you. I don't know whether any of you all have gone to Clinton, Brandon, or any other school, but their facilities is outnumbered to any of them. Jackson Public, we are the city of Jackson. We should have something for our children, not a pastor, not something that don't look decent. Now, let me say this. Baseball pay, baseball gives scholarships. All of you are proud, I don't know how you got your education, but our children, we have some children who have received baseball scholarships and they have uh, got an education. So school board, I'm asking you all to look and find out and see where you can find uh, some place. I'm not asking you to put a field on every campus, but find somewhere where our middle school can have baseball and find us a field for our junior, for our senior, um, for our uh, high school to play baseball. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman.
Dr. Gray, I am sure that um, that's of interest to all of us so, and Dr. Gray. Absolutely. So we normally, Madam President, Board of Trustees, of course, we normally don't comment after public comments because that's the protocol of the board meeting. Uh, Mr. Cheatham, uh, we will be getting back with you. Our athletic director, Mr. Clinton Johnson, uh, is a former baseball player and so am I. So those, that sport is very near and dear to our hearts. As a matter of fact, we have more coaching slots for baseball than we do for basketball. Uh, but we rest assured, sir, it is on the agenda. It is on our minds and hearts that we care about every one of our scholar athletes. And so we appreciate your comments tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We're now down to superintendent's report. Madam President, Board of Trustees, good evening to all who are gathered here tonight. Tonight, we will be doing a great deal of celebration and we appreciate all of those who are in attendance. We at Jackson Public Schools, under the leadership of the superintendent and the guidance of the Board of Trustees, are focused on three wildly important goals. Number one, increase academic performance and achievement. Number two, to increase average daily attendance for students, teachers, and staff. And number three, to attract and retain high quality teachers, administration, and staff. Our mission is simple and our task is succinct. We are building stronger schools together. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, our first announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, this week is School Board Recognition Week in the state of Mississippi. So please join me for a round of applause for the Jackson Public School Board of Trustees. This is a great time to focus on the crucial role our Board of Trustees have in our communities and schools. There are extraordinary people who volunteer, voluntarily tackle the enormous job of governing school districts. Their actions and decisions affect the present and future lives of our scholars. Recognizing board members for this commitment and sacrifice takes a combined effort on the part of all of those they serve. Administrators, school staff, students, and the community. Although showing appreciation should be a year-round process, taking advantage of the designated school board recognition week assures that these outstanding individuals receive some of the gratitude that they so richly deserve. And so in front of you, you see tokens uh, in front of the meeting table. You see tokens of appreciation from across our district in all of our schools. And so we're grateful for your service. And I personally thank you so much for your commitment to all of the scholars, faculty, staff, and administration of Jackson Public Schools. I will, there's a wonderful plaque that comes along with your recognition, <laughs> uh, along with the goodies that you would enjoy as well. And we'll get those to you before the end of the day. Once again, I want to just celebrate you for your tireless efforts. Uh, and it is practically um, a full-time job in itself. And so if we could spend just a moment in celebrating you once again, we will just indeed do that. So thank you so much again for your service to Jackson Public Schools. Milestones in Democracy with Jackson State University. Last October, Jackson State University hosted an event to recognize and celebrate significant accomplishments in American democracy right here in our capital city. The collaboration involved the Institute of Government, Mike Espy Scholars and Residence Series, the Margaret Walker Center, and the Center for University-Based Development, and the City of Jackson and the Jackson Public School District. Jackson Public School District high school seniors were asked to provide opinions on the 1985 election of the first mayor council form of government in the city of Jackson and the 1997 election of the Honorable Mayor Harvey Johnson Jr., particularly with regards to their significance at the time they occurred and whether they have had relevance to Jackson moving forward as a progressive city in the 21st century. Forty students from, our, from economics and government classes in our high schools participated. Their thoughts were captured in a commemorative booklet entitled, 
Reflections from Our Students. Here to tell us more about this is our very own Dr. Evelyn Leggett, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs with Jackson State University. Please welcome and celebrate Dr. Leggett as she comes. Superintendent Gray, the distinguished members of the board, and this great audience this afternoon. I'm very pleased to, to be here today to represent our president, President Carolyn W. Myers uh, at Jackson State University, and to salute the great work of the Jackson Public Schools. You know, if we would listen to others, we would think that the Jackson Public Schools, they're just not doing the job. I'm here to tell you, at Jackson State University, we are proud, we are very proud of the success of students that you are working with each day. And we are also proud of the families who send their children to school each day and who support the work of Jackson Public Schools. So why don't we just take a moment now and salute Jackson Public Schools. <laughs> At Jackson State University, we have a unit that is called the Institute of Government that reports directly to the provost. And that unit is chaired and the executive director is our own Dr. Otha Burton. Let's salute him as well. <laughs> as you have heard, last year we had a great conference downtown where we were talking about milestones in democracy. 30 years of a more representative government in Jackson. And many of us who are sitting in the audience today, we were there when Harvey Johnson was elected. We were there when history was made. But more importantly today, our seniors from all of the high schools and Jackson Public Schools work to write and to express and to reflect on what this means to them and what this meant to them. And so I am pleased on behalf of the entire faculty and family at Jackson State University to present to Jackson Public Schools milestones in democracy which have reflections written by your students, your children, your friends' children, our friends' children, and tonight, we are pleased to honor all of the students who took the time to participate, who took the time to say, yes, I want to be a part of this document. So I'm pleased to honor all of the faculty, staff, <laughs> students, and principals who work with the students. That's what we must do, work with the students. And now, tonight, this is what we promised you, that we will bring 1,700 books to be distributed to the seniors at all of the high schools and in Jackson Public Schools. This is what we did. So as I begin to go to my seat, I want you to know that Jackson State University values the contributions of Jackson Public Schools. We welcome your students who would want to matriculate at our outstanding institution. And we thank you for all you do, all you have done, all you will do, because to this great audience, these are our children. Let's take them seriously, and let's do the best for them. Thank you so very much for allowing me to be here tonight. Dr. Lego, would you mind a photo? 
Dr. Burton, could you join us, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. I do have, um, if I may just, Madam President, uh, back up one step. Uh, Mr. Cheatham, as in his comments, reflected that there were no um, sign errors for baseball, but we do have a correction. So apparently, um, Mr. Cheatham, your spirit is being felt. We did have one, one of our high school uh, uh, scholar athletes from Jim Hill High School signed with Tougaloo College and for baseball. So we're, we're very excited about that. As a matter of fact, if you would recognize his name, uh, it was Isaiah Rush. Is that last name sound for me to anybody in here? Okay, all right. So we're grateful for that. JPS scholars test their word skills at the annual Open Door Scrabble Tournament. Approximately 100 students in the Jackson Public Schools Gifted Education Program completed in, competed in the JPS annual Open Door Scrabble Tournament in January. Although Scrabble is a board game, it acts as a great instructional tool in the district's Open Doors Gifted Classrooms. Dr. Vicki Davidson, Director of Advanced Academics, joins us now to tell us more about it. Dr. Davidson? Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Gray. Good evening. An awards ceremony has been held for our first, second, and third place winners for Scrabble. However, this evening we would like to recognize our first place winners from Davis Magnet Elementary School as well as Northwest Magnet Middle School both International Baccalaureate World Schools. When I call your name, if you would please come forward. From Davis Magnet Elementary, we have Joshua Bennett, fourth grader. Mm -hmm. Caitlin Walker, fifth grader from Davis. And from Northwest Magnet Middle School, we have Melanie Galbraith. If you could please come forward. <laughs> Davis's Open Doors teacher is Kano Clark. And I believe he's at another event this evening and could not join us. And the teacher for Northwest Magnet Middle School is Karen Googe. We would like to recognize the school's principals, Dr. Kathleen Grigsby from Davis Magnet, and Ms. Denise Sutton from Northwest Magnet. Also, if our scholars, parents, and family members could please stand to be recognized. On behalf of district leadership, we truly thank you for everything that you do for our scholars.
Jackson Public School salutes Teachers of the Year. It's no secret that JPS has some of the best teachers in the state of Mississippi and indeed in our country. The qualities of a great teacher are passion, leadership, classroom management, and content knowledge. Teachers serve in many roles that require unique qualities. Teachers accommodate the academic, social, and emotional needs of their scholars. This requires the aforementioned qualities to be exhibited consistently. At this time, Chief Academic Officers Dr. William Merritt, Dr. Michelle King, Ms. Chinelo Evans, and Dr. Frederick Murray will come forward and introduce the 2016's Teachers of the Year and the schools that they represent. All right, great evening to great Dr. Evening. Gray and to the Board of Trustees. I'm very honored to present a group of teachers from Division Two. From Baker Elementary, Ms. Pendleton, Ms. C. Pendleton. <laughs> From Brown Elementary, Ms. Taruko Tabashi. <laughs> From Davis Magnet Elementary, Ms. Casey Hellings. From Green Elementary, Ms. Monica Christmas. From Isabel, Ms. Joyce Denson. From John Hopkins, Carmelita Jacobs Johnson. From Johnson Elementary, Ms. Demontria Nichols. From Key Elementary, Ms. Carla Hall. From Lester Elementary, Ms. Jamita Carter. From Marshall Elementary, Ms. Wanda Moses. From McLeod Elementary, Ms. Sharon Rainey. From Pecan Park Elementary, Ms. Janice Griffith. <laughs> Power APAC, Ms. Melissa Woods. <laughs> From Smith Elementary, Ms. Jessica Quinn. <laughs> From Timberline, Ms. Deshondra Tucker. From Walton Elementary, Mr. Zachary Hodge. <laughs> the only male representative in the group. <laughs> From Watkins Elementary, Ms. Janika Williams. And last and certainly not least, from Woodville Heights, Ms. Chiquita Ali. <laughs> also, I want to recognize the great principals who uh, these teachers serve under. So if you would stand at this time and be recognized. <laughs> Thank you.
Dr. King, before you um, resume, could I ask the uh, teachers please to stand again? We couldn't see you as your uh, other teachers, the principals, I'm principals. sorry, to please stand again. Let us thank you, principals. Thank you. Good evening, representing Good evening. District <laughs> Division One. <laughs> Got out of order a little bit. We have Valerie Green, Bar Elementary. <laughs> Benita Gates, Bates Elementary. Sheila Gibson, Board Elementary. <laughs> Rebecca Walker, Casey Elementary. <laughs> LaKendria April, Quazelle <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> Mary Cox, Dawson. Elementary. <laughs> Ashley Johnson, French Elementary. <laughs> Brandy Hamlin, Galloway Elementary. <laughs> Sarah Nicholson, George Elementary. <laughs> Denise Thagger, Lake Elementary. <laughs> Tiffany Charleston, Lee Elementary. <laughs> Kayla Taylor, North Jackson Elementary. <laughs> Stacy Dunn, Oak Forest Elementary. <laughs> Herman Johnson, Pondexter Elementary. Brandis Harvey, Raines Elementary. <laughs> Delanche Leach, Span, Lesh, I'm sorry, Span Elementary. <laughs> Denise Taylor, Sykes Elementary. <laughs> Keon Shelby, Van Winkle. And last but not least, Mrs. Shirley Wilson, Vet Wilkins Elementary.
As they are going back to their seats, this is just a little information for our Board of Trustees. I've begun a Superintendent's Advisory Council. Uh, randomly selected 100 teachers in our district to provide some guidance in a couple of areas. So, and I've met with both elementary groups, several of which are Teachers of the Year. So mm -hmm. it's, it, that's amazing the way that works. So we're grateful for their support. Ms. Evans. Great evening again. For the middle school division, we are pleased to present our Teachers of the Year. Bailey A. Pack, Ms. Amy Breckenridge. Blackburn Laboratory, Parthrenia Walker. <laughs> Brinkley Middle School, Ms. Stephanie Luckett. <laughs> Cardozo Middle School, Sharon Bolden. Chastain Middle School, Ms. Sarita Williams. Hardy Middle School, Ashley Morgan Evans. Northwest IB, Ms. Erica Iguabadia. Kirksey Middle School, Raven McGee. Peoples Middle School, Ms. Lynette Dokes. Powell Middle School, Douglas Moore. Rowan Middle School, Amber Terrell. Cyrell Middle School, Albert Red. And last, lastly, Britain Prep, Ms. Jocelyn Butler. <laughs> Would the principals of these great middle schools please stand and be recognized? The principals, let's give them all a round of applause. I do apologize. Will principals of Division One please stand and be recognized? Good evening. Good evening. It's my privilege to recognize the Teachers of the Year in the High School Division. Career Development Center, Kristen Thigpen. <laughs> Callaway High School, April Larkin. Forest Hill High School, Lakia Westerfield. <laughs> Jim Hill High School, Rachie Williams. <laughs> Lanier High School, Selena Webb. <laughs> Mara High School, Pedro Gallion. <laughs> Wingfield High School, Kristen King. And I think Ms. Westerfield, Ms. Westerfield is absent, but she's, uh, she's also the coach in there in the playoffs, so, so she's doing double duty. I have uh, one more recognition, but uh, this person just so happens to be the district's teacher of the year. 
So our district teacher of the year comes from the high school division. Ms. LaShonda uh, McGinnis is a native of Jackson, Mississippi. She graduated from the Jackson Public School in, in 1989. <laughs> If I can share just a few words about Ms. McKinnis. Uh, Ms. LaShonda McKinnis is a native of Jackson, Mississippi. She matriculated through Jackson Public Schools, graduating in 1989 uh, from John W. Provide High School. Um, she, she further continued education in Mississippi Valley, where she graduated with a Bachelor's in Arts in Political Science and Pre-Law, and she received a Master's in uh, Master of Arts in Teaching from Jackson State. Ms. McGinnis currently teaches, at, teaches English at her alma mater, which is Provine, where she strives to impart a wealth of knowledge that she has accumulated about literature and life. She's done that for the past 22 years. Ms. McGinnis is a passionate woman. She has a passion for family, passion for education, a passion for people, and a passion for sharing her wealth of knowledge and experience wherever she goes. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our teacher of the year, Mrs. LaShonda D. McGinnis. I'll celebrate the teachers one more time, please. Awesome work, awesome work. High school principals. High school principals. High school principals. Thank you all. Awesome. Thank you. All right, in the midst of the transition, I will move forward. Jackson Public Schools honors Administrators of the Year. Principals vary in strategy, temperament, and leadership style, but the great ones have four characteristics in common. Great principals take responsibility for school success. Great principals lead by example through teaching and learning. Great principals strategically hire, develop, and retain excellent teachers. At this time, I'd like to recognize the principals who were selected in this year's Administrator of the Year competition. When I call your name, please come forward. The finalists for the 2016 Administrator of the Year competition are from Blackburn Laboratory School, Dr. Valerie Bradley. <laughs> Middle School for a cheering section. Okay. <laughs> uh, from Provide High School, Principal Lakeisha Marshall Thomas. <laughs> from Galloway Elementary School, Erica G. Bradley. Ladies and gentlemen, the principal of the year from a school over off McDowell Road with the tiniest parking lot in the city. <laughs> the principal of Key Elementary, Ms. Dion Woody.
is evident that Miss Woody has a love for her scholars and this community and that they love her. Mrs. Woody's leadership and laser-like focus on academic achievement is phenomenal. She is the epitome of leadership in our district. Principal Dion Woody joined the school just four years ago and in that time improved the rating, the state rating for the school. Uh, Woody received both a bachelor and master degree in education from Jackson State University. She is an active member of Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church and the Madison County Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, where, see, <laughs> where she's involved in numerous community service oriented projects and partnerships. She will serve as JPS's Administrator of the Year throughout the next school year. She will also represent the district in the Mississippi Administrator of the Year Recognition Program. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, please join me in saluting these outstanding administrators along with the Principal of the Year, Ms. Dion Woody. Okay. You all are just the best board in the state of Mississippi <laughs> because you let us do that. We appreciate you. Just one note about Key uh, and Dion as she's leaving or if they if you had to rush out, you may recognize that Key Elementary at one point had a state accountability rating of D, yes. but it was Dion's leadership that rose yes. at two levels yes. in one year, so we're excited about that. Are there any other members? I know that there's a, a teacher of the year from uh, Key Elementary as well, and any other members from Key and the family of Key? Awesome. Good to see you all. Uh, great. Thank you. It was an outstanding celebration at her school just later earlier this week and her family and church and everybody from the sorority was there as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the board, thank you so much. This is, concludes our superintendent said, oh, I have one other. So the quarterly update uh, of ABCs will take place uh, hopefully the second meeting in March. We have a, uh, we began our nine week tests in the first week of March, and so I'll, we, we expect to have those data back and uh, we'll report quarterly for, for your uh, consideration at that time. Madam President, Board of Trustees, that concludes the superintendent's announcements and report. Thank you, Dr. Gray. We'll now move to information items only. We have none. Information action items. Madam Ms. President, Miller. Madam President, Board of Trustees, she's already there. <laughs> Good evening, Dr. Gray, Ms. Burt, Good members evening. of the board. I present to you the um, monthly financial report for the month ended January 31st, 2016. That report contains your budget status report, your uh, statement of fund balance, your um, bank reconciliation, and also your cash flow report for district maintenance. This is being presented for your approval. Entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve the uh, monthly financial report. Any comments, questions? Ms. Miller, yes. do you want to tell us anything about our financial status? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm very happy to, to, um, to uh, I guess, to review and give you a, a brief review of where we are now. We are actually, um, which is a good thing, below expenditures uh, budget, and we are slightly above revenue collections, going into our yeah. biggest revenue season. Um, we are watching very closely again the tax payments they'll be coming in in the next two months so we'll be able to give you a a, a better picture of where we are on Avalorum. Uh, we have uh, under Dr. Gray's leadership and he's allowed me to uh, work with our department directors to make sure that we will end the year in the black. It's been uncomfortable for some folks but we are making sure that our expenditures are lining up with our goals and that um, we are making uh, the best use of our taxpayer dollars. We are, have started our budget process. Uh, we will continue. We are starting to have meetings uh, with the Finance Committee to talk about things to update. So we do have um, 
some challenges ahead. We have not uh, been able to get anything, any type of information from the legislature at this point as it relates to MAEP funding. It's a little bit early. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of bills out there that will have some, may have some effect upon us, so we're watching them very closely. But at this point, our, our financial system, our financial status is, is very stable. We have a very stable fund balance, and that's always a, a good, good indication of where we are. Wonderful, thank you. I just, I just think it's uh, really important that we periodically let the community know where we stand, uh, particularly as we improve all the things that we're doing at Jackson Public Schools. Yes, ma'am. Was there a hand down there? Down. Dr. Burton. Dr. Burton. Thank you, uh, Madam President, for uh, uh, bringing it up. It's always good to get uh, positive financial report. Ms. Miller, a little leadership of Dr. Gray, you're doing an outstanding sending job with all those who support you. I have one, one question. This is just a little window to ask it, and it's surely not asking you to spend anything, <laughs> Dr. Gray. Um, it is something that I knew I know, a few years back some of the board members raised um, that would appear on the one end wouldn't require uh, Mr. Davis a lot of elbow grease, but just a little bit of uh, paint money, you know. Uh, some things around like, you know, just driving around, you, you know, these gates, you don't even call them gates, whatever you call them, we lock to keep, everybody's old as they look just rusty and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes just a little paint, little whatever sure. color paint. And uh, even on some of the fence, is that our fence or fences? <laughs> around, yes, you know, not the whole thing, just a little paint here and there. Yes, sir. Um, uh, you, you could call it an aesthetic fund or something, and maybe sure. over the summer would have you, but those little things go a long way. Yes, sir. Know. Absolutely. I was riding by, I was going to a meeting in, in the Delta uh, Wednesday, and happened to go up. up uh, when Meg Evers changes to 49 by yes, Northwest, mm -hmm. you know, we know all the work we're doing there and what we had to do, and then I just noticed that little, it's, it's bad when you, sometimes people are looking at little things. I wasn't looking at the little things. Yes, sure. yes, but sir. I just saw that little gate. That okay. Was, yeah, and, you know, it was uh, those little things. Yes, sir. Uh, Madam President, Board of Trustees, Dr. Burton, I, we, you know, you, we appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Uh, and so when you see them, if you, if you're, in a position to do so, send me a text or, or, or a quick phone call. We'd be happy to address them. Um, we appreciate you. I think that it was uh, the portables at Murrah High School. Uh, the, the, the bottom, the skirt, I call them, was dented. And, and you're absolutely right. What we want to do is to present um, uh, excellence to our community yeah, because that's what we are. We just have to make sure that our aesthetics uh, reflect that. So. At any time, if you see anything, uh, Mr. Oppenheim has done that on a couple of occasions, uh, that needs our immediate attention, we'd be happy to do that. The, the staff under uh, Mr. Davis uh, uh, works very very hard to make sure that they address all of these issues. They're in and out of the buildings quite frequently, and sometimes you just don't see it. And if you don't see it, then we want to make sure that those who are watching indeed do. I remember Leland Speed when he was uh Surely MDA director, but before then would, would suggest to the city at times, just particularly talking the gateways to the mm -hmm. city, those thoroughfares, just a little sprucing up. Yes, sir. Would just do wonders for people's image mm -hmm. or their mm -hmm. perception. Yes, sir. Little things. You know. Right. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Dr. Byrne. You are absolutely right. I was. We must have been doing the same kind of thing. There are a few letters missing from Blackburn. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, so let me just, school. if yeah, I say, maybe, Madam about President, that. let me just say, we are wrestling with that. Yeah, Is there a community plea I can make about right now? Y'all need to leave them letters alone, <laughs> please. <laughs> Every time we pray. I know, them, I know. Three times, okay? So we're trying to, and that's something that. It's not just black, but they did it at Jackson State, too. Yeah, Somebody so, just loves the letters, and they love just, those directional yeah. signs around the roundabouts. They just want to run into them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not with a car. Right. Right. Dr. Really? Byrne, I mean, <laughs> we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be some head injuries there. I mean, they're not even 
<laughs> he says it in jest, Mr. Oppenheim. Yeah, thank you, Madam President and Dr. Gray. I actually went to a different place when you said the community plea because I know, I think maybe like last year, the year before when we just, oh, when some community partners reached out, I think to Mr. Davis about Rowan and they just wanted to paint their, their sidings and they wanted to paint the, the bars, that that's also a great way to bring in community partners and sure. say, here's a, a way to engage in your, in your school in a very, uh, special way too. That's absolutely true. Last year we actually painted G N Smith. Mm -hmm. uh, my organization did uh, as a part of that. Yes. Okay. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a se second. Those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Consent agenda items. Finance. Madam President, Board of Trustees, for your consideration, it is under consent agenda items, items A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Uh, for your consideration and approval, we can take them collectively unless you desire us, us up another way. Um, I wanted to um, have a few comments about the center source purchase of instruction materials for yes, exceptional education. That's, uh, that's under um, the next section under uh, items general. Items general. So I entertained. Um, if you can just actually just comment about it, and then if members have no objections, we can take the entire A through G. Okay. Um, Dr. Gray, Ms. Burt, members of the board, item B is the approval of a single source purchase of instructional materials for the exceptional education department from a um, curriculum associates LLC. Um, this, this, um, these instructional materials are actually um, being purchased to enhance or to tie into the instructional materials that are already existing in the district. Um, these are materials that, um, especially the preschool division of exceptional education uses to assess students' functional levels and to assist them in writing those IEPs. This material is already in the district, but it's time to replenish, and that's the purpose for the single source. This is the only company that provides this material that actually is mirror of the material that's already being used. Um, in speaking with the exceptional edu education department, the reason for continuing this is for that purpose, to keep continuation, to make sure that as you have a baseline on those students' educational uh, levels, that you continue testing them with the same type of materials from the same company, so you can get some consistency in how they're progressing. So that's the purpose, uh, and that's the reason for the single source purchase here. So at what point will we be able to evaluate whether, in fact, uh, this long-term uh, kind of service is uh, working. I think Dr. Fisher. As to whether there might be um, opportunities for others, uh, kinds of services to do that, or do we intend to just keep this forever? I mean, I it's just a question. Dr. Fisher will have to, he's better equipped to answer that question. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Madam President, Board, sure. uh, this is not something that we can, we want to continue indefinitely because it's, it's working now. We have, a, we have a good data baseline. We have been um, evaluating our students and keeping data on them over a period of years. And if we change now, then we would have to sort of start sure. all over. So that's why we're wanting to continue using this particular program that we have uh, already in the district. Until what time? Well, uh, no certain no certain time. Uh, we just feel like right now it's for our low functioning students, mm -hmm. for those that have uh, cognitively um, low function skills, and uh, we're hoping that over the next few years that we will be able to evaluate the program as well as the student progress to determine how well that this program is uh, working within the district. So far, it's been working extremely well. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Jones, Question. then Dr. Burton. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam President, Superintendent Gray. Um, how 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 much time? I know you, last time you addressed us that you were doing some uh, recruitment of um, uh, teachers in, in the special ed. How will this program? 
how long will it take for them to be acclimated with the program, or is it something that's, that's kind of fluid where they're able to step in? Yeah, this is something that's different because this is for our younger students uh, and, our, and for our functional skills classes. The students, the, cl the teachers that we're trying to recruit are for our inclusion classes and for our students that, have, that are uh, uh, at, a, at a higher functioning level. Okay. Dr. Burton. The current instructional materials, because you, you said something about continuing. So the current instructional materials are provided by the same. How, how long have they been? Um, it's to my knowledge, to my knowledge, I, uh, from what I understand, it's been in the district since about 2005 or six. Uh, the program has been in the district that long. And um, um, it's time to replenish what they've been continuing to use. So this is the first time the district has uh, gone through a process to uh, continue the product? To my knowledge, yes. In 2005, whenever, was it a sole source then? Yes. Yes, it was. I, I believe it was, Dr. Burton. I guess following Ms. Bird, Bird's questions, um, not at all have anything to do with the, the quality of this company, uh, but it's the whole language of sole source. You know that. Um, so what makes it sole source is the only, is it the, the only company that we can determine provides this as a sole source because it previously was provided by this firm? It actually is the sole source because it is the only company that provides the material that is identical to the material that's already been used. Um, it's similar. Which is their material. Yeah, it is. It is their copyrighted material. So we are actually, it's a, as I understand it, it's more of an upgrade since 2005, and then we're replenishing because we're out of what we have been using in the past. So in essence, it's a supplement to what is already. To it's already being used. Yes, ma'am. We're satisfied with um, this usage and the impact of our instructional material since 2005. Yes, sir. And we're satisfied because <coughs> how, do we, how do we measure that? Well, the, the, by student progress. By student when progress. you look at the data, how well the students have been progressing over a period of time, we're talking about our students that are very, very low functioning. Okay. And because of that, this program that, that has been it's scientifically research-based program, and because of that, the children have been able to progress uh, very well with this particular we just program. We need to hear that as board members because, and that's probably part of your justification in your records, in your files, that we continue this sole source is because there's progress we we can uh, we can monitor. Thank you, Dr. Burton. That's, that's the um, exact intent of the program because, I mean, of my question, the depth of the question regarding sole sourcing so that there's a clear understanding that we're not just being arbitrary and capricious about uh, getting this uh, materials for our students. Um, how many elementary students do you know that we have who are um, listed as uh, low functioning or in this category I don't have, have that idea? number I don't have that number with me but I can I, but I can provide that information for you thank you I, it's not related to this particular issue but I have an interest in in knowing that uh, there might be services you know, that the students that come to your center they would be using this particular program as well yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay so we were interested in the elementary students because we have the kids from the CDC and from Lanier High School. Right. So we were interested in the status of the elementary right. students. Yeah. It goes through ages three up through 21, but we're going to be primarily using it with our younger students. Great. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion for approval. Dr. Hearn. 
Uh, do we normally get from Ms. you, Ms. Miller, what uh, country donations and contributions here? We have. We you do, and we got and two, and they were past the deadline. So you'll see them at the next board nice. meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. And our surplus property is our regular disposal of regular surplus property. Yes, ma'am. And um, Mr. Jackson and I have talked about perhaps a new way of um, perhaps ridding the district of some equipment. I met with at the, um, as a matter of fact, at the fair that we went to a couple of weeks ago, um, a company that um, wants to help us do some online bidding and perhaps get that out there, get our information out there world, you know, nationwide. So we're going to explore that possibility. Great. Great. Happy to hear that. All righty. I have one question. Yes, Mr. Jones. This is um, for the roof replacement at Harding Middle School. <coughs> is, it, is it appropriate time to ask a question about it? It's just sure. a question, no, 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 no separate issues. Um, in most cases when the roof is being replaced, does this, are we seeing any leakage? Like in, in, interiorly, or does that replacement cover any like water to the floor or anything on those? Well, things? this was actually damaged from the hailstorm, mm -hmm. so um, there may have been some leakage. But what has happened is we've taken a very arduous process with our insurance company to walk those roofs, and so this is um, a result of that. And if there's any interior damage, the insurance company will also reimburse us for that as well. Okay. So the initial assessment or or review uh, would not point out that, or they kind of do it in a state. We state, do it in stages. stages. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Ms. Miller, that brings up a, a question that I had. I saw something somewhere about bats in the attic or bats at uh, Bailey Magnet or <laughs> something. Was that actually true? I um, think it was something that wasn't bats. I think it was. No, ma'am. It, it, was was it was some Wilson. other type of. Um, right. Okay. What was bird. it? Bird. It was. There was a type of bird. It was a type of it was bird. A bird. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Did we get As, rid of them? That I don't believe they were in the school. They were they just they on top of the they school, around trees. like in the trees. Right. Okay. And, and so, um, uh, Madam President, Board of Trustees, just it, this will make you chuckle. So, uh, this speaks to the creativity of Ms. Hollinshead, who was the principal at Bailey um, uh, Magnet School. So, she turned it into a theme and she used it as a learning experience for our scholars. Uh, but it was, there were no bats. Okay, so, well, <laughs> pleased to hear that. It just happened to occur in, I think, mm -hmm. September, October, right and around they were dark Halloween, and, and it was, right. you know. Okay, yes, right. Yes. And so when the schools uh, have roof problems, do we also look at them for mold and mildew prior to uh, installation of roofs? Yes, ma'am. We do a full assessment at, at that point. Um, asbestos, mold, mildew, any type of leakage, we do that. And this process, even though the hailstorm was a hu huge issue for us, has uh, allowed us the opportunity to walk all of our roofs to make sure right. um, that we are catching any type of, of um, issues. Um, the insurance company really probably loves us right now. I think that claim is upwards around $21 million. So we have gotten our money's worth. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Sims. I have one question. Thank you, Madam President. How many more roofs do we still yet have to get all the health Finished. more damage done? And I'm how actually, far are we in the progress of getting that I'm actually Project not time. sure Mr. Davis is here. He may can tell us how many roofs we have left. We have, it's been a slow process. I will tell you, um, mm -hmm. perhaps insurance companies, you are familiar with the fact that they don't want to pay. Mm -hmm. And so we have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact no. that it's been going into three years, <laughs> that no, we have, it's <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> been a challenge. Excuse us, Mr. Hobbs. <laughs> it has been a challenge, but Ms. Robinson is here. She may can tell you more. Good evening, board members. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this summer, we have 12 projects that are scheduled. We've done um, 13 roof replacements so far, or roof repairs, under the Hailstorm insurance. And in total, um, 77 of our buildings receive some type of hail damage. So um, we still have several to go. So uh, if you do that math, we still have about 40-something uh, roofs to do, and so we plan to do those over the next two summers. 
Yes, ma'am. I think uh, uh, of note, probably, obviously, maybe not even need to be stated, but we can't do roof, Madam President, Board of Trustees, we, uh, Ms. Sims, we can't do roof repair while our scholars are in the building. So uh, it, it, we have to uh, isolate this work in the summer and in schools that aren't having summer school. So right. does that mean they may be leaking? Um, we do um, spot repairs um, as much as needed. Sometimes um, Monday, with the amount of rain we got so quickly, a lot of the roof drains couldn't take all of that water. So even though it wasn't hailstorm related, it was a, a roof drain, just the, the amount of water, just like when the, the streets and your drains can't take it, and it, it kind of sits there. Mm -hmm. So um, our, our schools are not perfect, but we do uh, tend to those um, roof leaks um, as aggressively as we can when they do occur. Thank you. Thank you. Motion for approval, please. So moved. Second. So moved and second that we approve items A through G under consent agenda items finance. Questions? Those in favor? Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you. We're now down to consent agenda items general. Madam President, Board of Trustees, for your consideration, consent agenda items general. I do recognize that Mr. Oppenheim may want to um, uh, separate item F from the others. And so for your consideration, um, items A, B, C, D, and E under consent items general. And, and Madam yeah. President, if I could also request uh, item B on the yellow separately. Okay. All right, I will entertain a motion for on the consent agenda items A, C, D, and E. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we adopt items A, uh, C, D, E under consent agenda items general. Um, Mr. Oppenheim. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just have a question. This is a question I've raised a couple of times. George Elementary is one of our five or six schools that are still named after Confederate leaders. Um, you know, uh, Davis, Lee, Power, Poindexter, and I'm not sure about Forest Hill, but that's a possibility too. And so I'm wondering, and I think we've had some discussions about this as an aside, if we could start having some conversations about getting some of these names changed. Um, our, uh, our website actually says like the background of a lot of our school names. And George Elementary, I was looking at it yesterday, was one of the secessionists um, in that, the group, the parliament, or whatever it was called, um, the government. Not parliament, that's not what we have here. But um, that was part of that. So I, I would encourage if we could start a, a good dialogue about getting some of these schools uh, changed. Okay, Dr. Bird. I'm just trying to, you know, A, C, and E. We had a motion and a second, right? A motion and a second on A, C, D, and E. Yes, sir. A, C, D, and E. Did we vote on it? Sir, no, sir, we hadn't voted yet. We, we pull, we're gonna we pull, we're we're gonna B, pull C and B uh, and F. I'm sorry. B, um, and, F. F. B yes. and F. Yes, sir. So do we want to vote on the ones we have a motion and second? Uh, yes, sir. There are motion and second, and Mr. Oppenheim had a question had a about a question. Oh, okay. yes. had a question, question, question about one of those in there. Yes, sir. Yeah. It was uh, a question slash statement about um, you know, and I've reviewed, and we, we've talked some offline about this, about the process to do that, and if there's a legitimate reason our policy says that we have a really good standing to change names. I, uh, I, I, I'd like to, um, I'd like to entertain that as a separate issue because it's not related to this particular one, um, but uh, we can have um, a conversation about uh, a process. I don't know, frankly, okay. if we have one for that. Um, but we need, we can ask our attorneys if they yeah. will help us out with that and give us um, the process that we need to use to, um, to entertain your interest in that, Mr. Oppenheim. Um, 
Mr. Jones. Yes, I have a question, not so much about the topic that uh, Mr. Uh, my colleague is bringing up, but as it relates to George and the repairs that's over there, do I was looking over the um, the agreement. Um, <coughs> there's some language in there that states that if 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 we meet or do not meet our our uh, set dates for repairs, that um, archives could you know reverse or, or cut out the um, the funding, and I guess my question is: Do we anticipate or, or see anything which would um, hinder that from uh, from happening? I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Young, Dr. Mr. Davis, to come up and address that. We uh, just as they come, Madam President, Board of Trustees, uh, Mr. Jones, we've had we have enjoyed a pretty good relationship with the archives um, department of the state. Of course, you are very well aware of our relationship with the yes. work they've done at Lanier yes. and begun, I believe, at Bailey as well. Uh, and it may be others that I may not be uh, familiar with. But, Ms. Young, if you would. Uh, yes. Um, Superintendent Gray, school board members, if I believe I'm understanding your question, you are asking if um, we foresee any difficulty in meeting our uh, targeted deadline for our projects. No, we don't. As part of the grant process, we have to follow a strict timeline as well as a progress reporting to make sure that we're on schedule with everything we have targeted, as well as there are benchmarks set uh, in place by the grant that you must meet in order to make sure that you receive the funding. So no, we do not uh, anticipate any um, delays in terms of meeting our target deadline. For the grant process, there is a three-year window once you are awarded in making sure that um, all your paperwork and all the work is uh, carried out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So we are now, we only have a F. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. S. Motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Motion and a second with the exception of F. And, and, B, and B, Madam President. And B. Those in favor? Mr. Hobbs? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Now, uh, back to, let's take B. Madam President, Board of Trustees, for your consideration, approval of fiscal year 16, Title III, uh, Dr. Webley uh, will be available for questions. Good evening, Dr. Gray, Madam President, and members of the board, subject to your questions. Ms. Davenant. Thanks. Um, <laughs> He's smiling, but I don't know. We'll see a question. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Webley. I just had a couple of questions. I really appreciate um, having gotten, having received, sorry, um, the data points for um, the AMOs, and I'm blanking on uh, that acronym right now. Uh, for the um, for the students uh, who are ELL, uh, one of the questions I had is over the last few years, um, as opposed to maybe just the last year, have we seen uh, a growth in these data points? Well, actually, when you look at the data, I think our ELL students are doing relatively well as when you compare them to the other subgroups. So the answer to that question is yes, because even though we missed our annual measurable achievement objective, as you notice when you look at the data, it was not by a lot. In fact, when, we, um, when you look at the, um, the annual measurable objective for uh, obtaining uh, English, we actually met that AMO. So as you can see, even though we missed them, it was not by a lot. Now when you look at the graduation piece of it, they base that piece on the district's graduation rate. So if our district is not meeting the graduation rate, then our ELL subgroup is not meeting the graduation rate. So if you look at, if you take that AMO, AMO out and you just look at the other two where it looks at uh, making um, proficient um, progress learning English and attaining proficiency in English, we're actually making uh, <coughs> progress. So uh, to answer to your question is yes, we are. But, but we've been on a trend making progress? or Because we're only looking at this past year's data, right? That's right. I have not received the data for the ELL subgroup for this current uh, state assessment. They have not released this. This is the latest assessment on ELL. 
It, I'm sorry. It, I, I guess I'm asking you if there's a trend you moving going, upwards yes, sir, over uh, the last uh, few years. Yeah. It, if I may, Madam President, Board of Trustees, Mr. Oppenheim, uh, I think over uh, three years ago, we were in and out of progress. Uh, so we would make it in one right. and, and not make it in another. Then the next year, we would not make it in the one we made it before and then make it in the other that mm -hmm. we missed before. I think this year may be the first year that we've met in both and still missing graduation. Right. We missed it in two right. on the last assessment. But we made it in the first. See, they have three AMAOs for the ELL subgroup, Annual Measurable Achievement Objective. They look at them in three categories, students making progress learning English, in which we met that one. We, that's, a, that's a yes. Uh, students attaining proficiency in English. Our target AMO for that particular objective was 22.6. We actually had 19% of our kids who were proficient. So we only missed that one by 3.6%. And then, of course, the third AMAO is referring to graduation, which we did not meet because the district did not meet the AMO for graduation. But as Dr. Gray stated, it is a trend. One year we'll make one or two, then we'll miss. So I don't know what the rhyme or reason, but we've never missed all three. All right. So if I may, Madam President, Board of Trustees, Mr. Abner, part of it is um, there's some, some transients uh, for the uh, scholars that are categorized as English language learners. And so um, um, I guess the most respectful way to say is that uh, oftentimes we'll get them at a point of the year where it's you know too late to get them uh, at a point where they can do well. Right. Yeah, but we understand that about the transients, and I think that's what's been point. That's what we've been pointing at. The second thing is, it really wasn't until uh, two years ago that we started really pointing the spotlight here, uh, because we, uh, I don't know that we've been making the, um, the they call it the end, the, the number. There's a minimal number of students that you have to have in order to count this as a subcategory, mm -hmm. and I don't know that until recently we've actually had enough students that are in that subcategory to. Uh, you know, to make it make a difference, if I'm explaining that right. That is correct, way. Dr. Gray, that is correct. And what I would also like to point out is that we have over 391 kids that are identified as English language learners. However, only 200 and, um, 290 something, if I can see my numbers correctly, 290 something attend the ELL schools because many of the parents elect for their children not to attend an ELL school because they want to remain with the home school. So you have to uh, take into account that that's over 190 some kids that we're not even serving. Are, are we required to offer them transportation? We are, and we do. Okay. We do. And when the parents elect not to attend an ELL school, we highly encourage them, but ultimately it is the parents' decision. Right. And the, the other piece of this, I, and this is more um, just statement from having been lucky enough to go over to Callaway recently and go do a school visit there and seeing the blessing that is having a lot of students from, from all over really the world mm -hmm. um, and knowing that probably I imagine there's a lot of language barriers and making sure that we have the right resources. Are there ways, and I'm not sure if this is already happening, um, are there ways to pull in our local colleges who have international programs and really create some partnerships to help support and guide? I know last year I was lucky enough to bring some uh, Ethiopian students uh, who knew enough of the language of the Eritreans who were over there to come and just kind of start talking to them and dialoguing with mm -hmm. some of those students. But I wonder if there's a way, you know, and of course I'm always happy to help out to like bring in some of our local colleges and their international folks to kind of make some of those links and create some of those. Oh, well, you know, we are the king of partnerships <laughs> in Jacksonville <laughs> School. So I think that I'm going to assign this Dr. Webley uh, uh, that task going forward to make sure that if there are international students at our universities that they can connect mm -hmm. with our international students in our schools. Yeah. So I think fact, there's a lot of opportunities. Yes, and in sure. fact, we have called Jackson State on several occasions for resources. And they have very much um, obliged us and they have been very, very helpful. And as you said, at Callaway, we have uh, Ms. Gavon, who speaks several languages, and she speaks them very fluently. So we are very fortunate to have her at Callaway. And 
one of the questions that you had, Mr. Oppenheim, was what have we done to help assist with our ELL population? Well, this year we added on an additional school. We added on Pecan Park. So now we have an additional ELL school. SPAN is our largest ELL school. We have about 102 kids there. So to alleviate some of the population at SPAN, we did um, create Pecan Park as an ELL school, and that has worked very well. Thank you. Mr. Jones, then Ms. Sims. Yeah, I, I, you, you mentioned earlier in your comments. Oh, thank you, Madam President <laughs> and Superintendent Gray. Yes, and thank you, Dr. Yes. Love, for what you're doing. Uh, you mentioned in your comments in reference to parents' involvement. Mm -hmm. I see in your budget line here um, that there has been a, a, a allocated uh, forward, but tell me how has that involvement engagement been, you know, forward to, to increase, I guess you'd say, the, the students mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, uh, taking advantage of the services or that's been offered? How has that been going? Okay. Once a year, we have um, a parental night at one of our ELL schools. Last year, it was at Callaway. And um, we had a really a great turnout last year as well. We had never done it at the high school. So all of the ELL parents, we sent invites to all of the ELL parents and even to the, the parents that don't attend an ELL school. So we had quite a bit of turnout. And what we have done is at that parental meeting, we really prepare our students for learning for the summer we find that they lose a lot of ground during the summer. So that's one of the reasons why we tailor that meeting for the spring so that we can engage the parents with parental activities. We, uh, we address them with how to get a library card. In fact, what we have done is we, um, we used to do the summer school, but that didn't work so well because of other issues and our kids just were not coming. So we, the ELL teachers and I sat and strategized to try to come up with a plan that would engage them and that would of course prevent them from losing so much ground in the summer. So what we have done is we have partnered with a company, First Book, and they sell books for like a dollar. And so we were able to put at least 10 to 15 books in over 200 kids' hands personally last summer. And they're able to share those books with their families, with their community. So not only does those us being able to give them books help the child, but it's been able to help the entire family. So we meet with them in spring, like I said, to just prepare them for summer learning. Okay. It, 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 two things you mentioned there, too. Mm -hmm. Not to prolong the time, but thank you um, for the work you're doing. Do you think that we can have a beginning, you know, to, to set the stage for the parents, say, for instance, in the fall and mm -hmm. have it in the end? And then also with the library part, um, is there specific books that are that are there, or does can the library um, uh, partner better to provide books? You know, to kind of save that cost. What can we do? Here? Well, what we did was we did um, the teachers came up with a list of books okay. that the kids we thought the kids would be interested in, I got you. and they were actually given a survey to choose the books that they like. So we tried to order the books that the that, that the students chose, okay. and so. Again, we wanted to make sure that we put books in their hands in case transportation to the library is an issue for some of them. I got you. So, but the library, walking them through the library process, how to get a library card with the parents, that, that has been helpful in the past too. But we were having some loopholes, again, because of transportation issues. Okay. And we find that our ELL kids, they love to read. Sure. And of course, that is the goal to teach them to, to become proficient in English. So believe it or not, that $1 book has given us more bang for our buck than probably any of the things that we've done, okay. summer-wise. Good deal. Okay. Good. I, the reason I pointed to the library is I've been asked to, 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 to serve as trustee uh, chair for the Mississippi Library Association. Mm -hmm. oh, so if there is anything that we can do there, Absolutely. then we need to uh, make sure that happens. And, my, and I also have engaged with the Hyas County Library. So mm -hmm. if there's any issues you're having there, please let me know. Absolutely. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good to, to know that. Um, yes. Mr. Jones. Um, Ms. Sim. Yes, thank you so yes, much. Um, Madam President, Dr. Webb. Yes, ma'am. I'm loving this particular program, but I want to ask if we could, since we know that there are trends, <coughs> if we could some way document those on those scales, red, yellow, green, to see where we need to be and the international groups that you're bringing together, if you just let us know when that is. Mm -hmm. um, Jackson State has a great program um, during the spring, International Week, okay. yes. and they bring foods and different um, music uh -huh. and so forth, and it is a way to display what their, their national, right. national cultures are. Okay. 
and everybody really enjoys it because um, they get to taste different foods and so forth and I just see it as a way to engage not only the student mm -hmm. but the entire community when does the event take place because if it has not occurred we will try to get on board with it now oh right? yeah it's it's it's, it's like March or April is yeah. it not Dr. Bird it's coming up dance. within yeah. a month or so okay. and um, I know a lot of schools do bring their students uh -huh. yes. to Jackson State to right. observe those different um, cultures and so forth. And anytime we can enhance the learning of our language and embrace okay. where the children are coming yes, from, I think it's a win-win situation. Awesome. So if we could document right. what our trends are, and uh, I'm saying our trends, mm -hmm. meaning yes, the marks that we have not met, mm -hmm. we know the ones that we're striving for, so, all of them, to meet all of them. Yes, ma'am. The graduation rate, I'm kind of fuzzy about that. I'm not really, really sure. That's another district-wide situation, I'm thinking. Am I correct the, with that uh, thought? Yes, ma'am, that, that is correct. And so we, will, we are documenting that in our balanced scorecard. Okay. Uh, and we can, we can pull out, um, uh, ELL. The uh, reason I hesitate when I say ELL because I read an article recently that some students don't like that term, and so I don't know. Right now, I'm not sure what else to say. But uh, I digress. Yes, ma'am. We have a balanced score card. As soon as data comes in, we're we're inserted in there. You'll see that on a yearly basis, though, because the AMOs are are gauged uh, according to spring uh, tests. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't have this year's data yet, mm -hmm. but we could from the last mm -hmm. few years mm -hmm. so we know we're ramping up each, each year. And then I think if I may, if I think I'm right about this, uh, Dr. Davidson and Chinelo uh, Evans, uh, international baccalaureate programs attend that thing and that, right, right, exactly. And so, we, so our ro very ro robust international baccalaureate program we have in Jackson Public Schools, uh, we're already fully engaged in that uh, spring event at Jackson State. So you're, you're right to bring that up, and we'll make sure that we continue that, that, uh, that partnership. Thank you. La last question. I, and I echo Ms. Sims. I think it'd be cool to also do some kind of event at the actual JPS school, too, yeah. uh, kind of as a mirror to it. Um, just last question on, on this particular issue. If a child is transferring, coming into the district, and they actually do have really good English skills, is there any? Do we test them for the appropriate grade level, even if they haven't done, grown up in in an American school system? Uh, Doctor, help me go ahead. Um, whenever a child enters our district, whether he's black, red, yellow, purple, green, it doesn't matter the color. They are given a home language survey. That's standard. And if on the home language survey that the child indicates that English is not the first language spoken in the home, that's when we take it a step further to see if the child will qualify for ELL. Just because a child is Spanish he doesn't mean that he, he or she necessarily needs those services. So once the child indicates on the survey that English is not or is the first language spoken, if, if they say it is not, then we test the child on the new uh, ELL assessment. And uh, if the assessment determines that the child does need services, then we move forward. But normally, if the child indicates that English is not the first language, they don't qualify to be, um, they don't qualify to be screened any further than whatever protocols that the school has in place, whatever screeners that we're currently using, that child will have access to the same screener as any other child would to determine his strengths or his weaknesses. So if they don't come with transcripts, that's not necessarily a, a, a concern if they meet these other um, levers? Most of our children, uh, if they don't come with transcript, they will need the services. But the ones that, that have trans transcripts, they're pretty English proficient. But if they come without transcript, 99% nine, of the time, they're going to qualify for the services. So we will take it a step further. But if they come fully with their transcripts and they're just transferring from U one U.S. school to another and they're pretty proficient in English, we don't take it any further. Well, not U.S. school, a school from outside. Of right, country. yes, but yes. Thank you. Dr. Burton. Just, just to comment, uh, um, Jackson State University, um, has a very large international uh, 
presence there of students and faculty and staff, very large. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I know Dr. Slade is the director of international programs, community colleges. Um, and that would be a good contact in terms of just blending some of what mm -hmm. is happening in GPS and our campus. And um, uh, you can email me and I can give you more particular contact number okay. and for her or staff. And if you have been, if you approach the campus from um, Lynch Street East, mm -hmm. coming to Dalton mm -hmm. and Lynch, you see all those flags out yes, there. Sir. There's going to be a dedication, I believe, March of uh, that circle of cultures, and it'll be a huge globe installed there. So uh, then um, Dr. Slade's office can tell you when it is. It'd be good to have our students from GPS yes. attend that. Yes, that would and be. In the, and then she can give you particulars about International Week. I think ours occurs in the spring and some of the other universities takes place in the fall. Mm -hmm. But still, that's just too big an environment there that we can blend with GPS. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. And, and just one last point from our Department of Academics and Behavioral Support. We do ask that our schools um, approach systematically uh, the interventions that they provide for students who are learning English as a second language. So that is part of their, uh, their plan within the school. So. Thank you. So let's go ahead and entertain a motion of approval of this one. If all hearts have been satisfied. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve consent agenda items B, general. Those in favor? Thank you, unanimous. Now we move down to F. If someone will, let's get it on the floor. Oh, so yeah. Mr. Oppenheim, yes, let's thank, hear what you Thank you, you, Madam President. Yeah, so the, um, so the Academy Ambassadors is a project of Alignment Jackson where they've been working with um, 10th graders, and I say they, but I might also slip into we, so I apologize. Um, have been working with 10th graders from each of our high schools uh, around a leadership, uh, civic engagement, et cetera, et cetera. And they recently started learning about and working around advocacy skills. And so uh, when we uh, put this before public comment about a month ago, um, they hadn't got to that point yet. But when they started working around advocacy, they said, hey, can we you know, submit comments to the board? And I said, well, we could find out if we could. You know, Of course, everybody could submit. Um, comments to the board. Uh, we were a little bit late in asking Madam President and Dr. Gray, I think maybe on Thursday or Friday of last week, um, if it was possible to delay the voting on this if it wasn't time sensitive um, so that these students who are kind of getting their first real taste around advocacy could submit some comments. So that's kind of the background. In the, okay. So, the so Ms. Involved, Alpine, yeah. is it the students view that their comments will uh, impact what the wellness policy is now? Uh, and that I couldn't say. I'm, I don't think they've actually read it yet. But when they were proposed and they were thinking about various policies, mm -hmm. we said, here's a policy that's open right now for public comment. Okay. So I, they, I, hadn't, they hadn't read it yet. OK, well, I'll ask the question, because I don't know if it would be fair you know, for us to change the policy without sending it out again to the general public because otherwise the general public won't have had the opportunity to um, to read their uh, comments and I wouldn't uh, think that we'd want to send it out again uh, because it's been uh, there for a, a while so is, is my question is that is this an exercise for them or do they intend to actually have an impact on what the policy is? Well, I think it's a little bit of both because I think at the la I don't remember what the last policy that came in front of us, but I think we had talked about receiving some kind of um, bullet points of the kind of public comments that had been submitted in case, um, in case we had had any thoughts about uh, changing the language in, the, in whatever the policy might be. So I think it's a little bit of both getting the practice, but I think in general, we, it would be the same thing if it had been the public uh, folks submitting comments, it'd kind of be the same situation. I don't like we would have gotten the comments today. 
but I don't know if the language would have necessarily changed unless it was already inputted into what's in our board document. Dr. Bowden. First question to, to uh, Dr. Gray to Attorney Shepard is uh, um, the time has expired for comments, right? Yes, sir. And it did when? What was it? It would have expired at tonight's board meeting. Board meeting. Um, does, is there anything that would preclude this body extending for another two weeks comment period to the public in general, not to this particular group? Pre anything that would preclude? Us not doing it. No, it would be at your decision to do so that. So if the board wanted to, and, and I'm, it would have to be to the public in general, but because we have this relationship with Orlando Jackson, uh, the board could extend it to, uh, and it, it doesn't come, it's gonna come, they don't come to the board, they come to the administration, right? That's correct. Okay, good. So uh, that we would give them whatever the first meeting, they, um, what is March? March, that's mm -hmm. next month, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. March first board meeting. Uh, and uh, then have you bring, what do you bring, you will, you will bring recommendations, right? Based on the public comments that have been entertained and the position of the board to those, is that correct? If there's all, uh, any changes that would be would be made as a result of those comments then so what you were going to bring tonight would be comments to the proposed changes right no actually no. no actually i was just bringing the agreement for approval which the is the out, i'm sorry the policy for approval which has been out for public comment yes sir all right, and so when you bring that policy, it has the benefit of comments and the position of administration based on any comments, whether you got one or a thousand, right? That's correct. Okay. So you've got the benefit, the administration has the benefit of what's been on the public view yes. to this point. So if we extend it two more weeks, I mean, you go through the same process. You consider those comments based on what has been recommended, right? That is correct. We consider the feedback um, that will be received if you go to more weeks. As the appropriate time, Madam President, colleagues, I would, if appropriate, I would offer a motion to extend the public comment period. <coughs> Second. For review by administration until our first board meeting, whatever date that is in March. Is that a motion? If I'm uh, right, it would be a motion. Second. Do we need a motion on this, or do can he, can Dr. Gray, withdraw it off the agenda? How do we handle it? I think you can do it either way. I think we can pull it and I'll bring it back at the first meeting, or you can do it by motion. If you what, pull it, how would the public know they would get, how, what would you do to inform the public it's been extended for two weeks? If you all want it for public comments, we can just send it back out to the public again. And, and so it's normally, an administrative decision. I'm sorry. It could be there for administrative decision and not necessarily some dictate of the board to you to do that. That's correct. Normally, we can just send it and say this uh, policy will come back before the board for approval at the March 1st and March 2nd meeting. That would be better meeting. so we don't have to get into the... Yes. So we can just... Think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Madam President, Board of Trustees, uh, Mr. Oppenheim, Dr. Burden, uh, if it pleases the board, then the administration would like to table this item for, for the next board meeting. We will, at that point, gather additional comments from our public. Thank you. Thank you. 
you may now go back to your group without being hit with eggs, I guess. Don't be nice, I swear. And Madam President, as we are transitioning to our next agenda item, I wanted to give an update. Uh, ad administration already has a meeting with Jackson State University uh, involving our international students program. So Theo Faulkner with Partners in Education and uh, Middle School Division Chief Nalo Evans will be meeting with them tomorrow. All right, that's fast. Modern technology. I know modern technology is something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're now down to uh, consent agenda items personnel. Madam President, Board of Trustees for your consideration approval of staff personnel matters. So moved. It's been moved and second that we approve uh, staff personnel matters. Questions, comments? Yes, Ms. Sims. I have a question and a comment. I um, want to just ask how did the employment fair go a couple of weeks ago for finding new qualified teachers? Wonderful question. As a matter of fact, that the word I got was that it went very well. We'll ask Sandra Lyons, Executive Director of Human Resources, to come forward and extend that report. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. President Burke, uh, Dr. Gray, members of the board. Uh, the fair went extremely well. We did have about 13 um, certified teachers that uh, came you know, on board, well, that came to the job there. And we picked up about, uh, I would say seven of the 13 that came on board. So there's seven more than what we had before. And that's, it's, that is, uh, I think, it's successful on, on all counts because it yes. is February. That's right. And yes. it's difficult to find anyone who's not already working. Correct. And so thank you so much for that. Uh, and what, it, as if I can just add a little to that, um, by, a, by the first meeting in April, our plans are by the first meeting in April to, to give you a full comprehensive uh, sort of spring swing in terms of what we'll be doing to recruit and retain, including uh, a couple of initiatives coming from the superintendent's office. And so at that time, uh, you know, that's when HR really ramps up their efforts. Uh, we're recruiting trips with Ms. Chambers. Ms. Lyons leading the, the way in that regard. So uh, we look forward to a pretty exciting spring with some of the new and in, in, in innovative approaches we'll have this year. So Ms. Lyons, how are we doing with um, those teachers who didn't pass their test? Um, we are working with uh, different universities and they are scheduling workshops with us and they we have a partnership with Bellhaven Jackson State and they have scheduled MAT workshops and those teachers are uh, participating in those workshops and for well I would say probably I would say maybe 65 percent of those teachers, those expert citizen teachers, or those limited service teachers are involved in those workshops. Mm -hmm. And have we lost any of those teachers since they had to revert back to the limited service Very status? few. Very few. Very few. I would say maybe a good, um, out of the, I think, 80-some that we had, I think we may have lost maybe a good 15 to 20. And they have either gone to uh, classified status as teacher assistants <coughs> or academic tutors or so ISS is it teachers. their intent to still pass the, uh, yes pass the test they are involved in the MAT program but they were looking for mm -hmm. um, you know full-time status so they transition over to classified status and are some of the um, positions that are currently being filled is would any of them be some members who have passed the test yes ma'am Yes, and uh, have regained their uh, original status? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, those positions that we have vacant, um, mo the majority of those people, uh, excuse me, the majority of the staff members who are in the MAT programs are, uh, and they are passing the test, um, they will be picked up uh, either in the job fair, at the job fair on April 16th or before the summer is out. So we will be picking them up. So we're going to really, really put the recruitment rush on so when school resumes in the fall we will have 
a great number of teachers. Yes, ma'am. Well, and I, uh, I, I'm trying to keep the cat <laughs> in the bag. The first meeting in April when we talk about uh, this new innovative approach, especially for uh, seven of our schools, uh, we will uh, we'll be celebrating um, what we know to be a very strategic and um, eventful uh, way to attract and retain. Wonderful, wonderful. I hope that spells incentives. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Burton. I'm just scrolling down here. This, uh, I don't know if it's a correct or a typo. I'm looking at E3. I'm just looking at eligibility date. All the rest of them have somewhere around 2016. This one has a one one twenty eight twenty nineteen eligibility date. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, sir. Could you repeat that, please? E three. Mm -hmm. I'm in it. I'm just kind of scrolling and I look. It has an el eligibility date of one twenty eight twenty nineteen. That's oh, that is an that is an error typo okay. error, sir. Right. It is. It should be twenty sixteen. Yes, right. sir. Okay. I have one more question that yes, I have on personnel. <coughs> When our teachers are leaving, are we doing a departure <laughs> interview so we can know what the reasonings are so we can better prepare? Yes, um, yes ma'am. There is an exit survey that must be completed um, before the teachers leave or before they receive actually um, your last paycheck. That, that is, so let me say, Miss Lyons, is, and she's um, trying to put that out there respectfully, and I appreciate that, Miss Lyons. We have tightened the screws on that uh, in a lot of ways, and so yes, ma'am. Uh, all of departures come through my office, but before they get to my office, they go through HR, finance, principal, deputy, CAO, and then me. And so they are required uh, to fill out an exit survey. Many of what we found is that the teachers are either leaving because there has been a career potential for them that they're accepting, or they're moving out of the area for one reason or the other, and not so much as dissatisfaction with the job. But to add to that, what we've done also is the, a teacher survey, which created the Superintendent's Advisory Council. So we're getting it on, we're, we're applying it on both ends. Since it's a wildly important goal of the district, we've placed additional resources, uh, both human and, uh, and financial, in that area to make sure that we address it. So you're, you're already, you're way ahead of it, Ms. Sims. You're absolutely thinking on the same page as we are. So they have to, there's a lot. That's why staff is laughing, because we don't just, they don't, you have to let us know um, your concerns, if there are any, before you leave, so that we can fix it for others. What we discovered, though, is that there's not so much necessarily concerns. We've had illnesses, we've had pregnancies, we've had uh, uh, illness in the in the immediate family that live in another area that have to leave as well. But we've we've tightened that up pretty 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 much. Thank you, Ms. Thank you. Well, I hope we don't that we're diplomatic as we oh, no, before they reach your office. <laughs> Otherwise, your exit interview may be different. Yes, ma'am, no, it's absolutely <laughs> it's, 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 Yes, ma'am, it's, it's kind and gentle. It's just a, a page of things they have to sign you to turn in your key and yeah, turn off sure. your computer and so on and so forth. And then it's a, it's a gentle survey. It's not, yeah. uh, it's not aggressive by any means, but it's just we want to gain some uh, information. Good. Yes, ma'am. Right, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, We had uh, Mr. Oppenheim moved and Mr. Dr. Lynn second. Those in favor? Thank you. We're now down to other business. Dr. Gray, I wanted to, um, to mention uh, the Environmental Learning Center today. I just happened to be going toward uh, out there, and I whipped up in there. And the place has so much potential. And um, I mean, it's a learning lab. <laughs> it's an outdoor learning lab. It has the potential to be just a wonderful gem 
for our school system, but it seems to be falling in disrepair. And stuff that I think that can be done with it um, that will bring it back where not only the kids can have uh, an opportunity to get outside. You know, I am about this outside yes, stuff and, absolutely, absolutely. and uh, flowers and all of that. Mm -hmm. But it's just an, an opportunity for kids to breathe. Mm -hmm. And as we're talking about the um, farmer school, mm -hmm. uh, where Nick Wallace is at Powell and at Blackburn Middle School, mm -hmm. there's a great space out there where kids can actually produce stuff. I mean, really, really, really good vegetables for their families, for the schools, uh, for whomever. But just the, the process of doing it. So. Uh, has great value. So I would hope that it would like for us to give that some attention. Yes, uh, if we have to put up on Saturday and go out and paint, well. do whatever we need to do, that needs to be a beautiful place. The lake is just absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. out there. I didn't come back in like two hours sure. when I went out there because right. it was just so relaxing. So, uh, Madam President, Board of Trustees, we've had conversations about this. Uh, we. I didn't talk to staff about this. I'm just going to put that out there. So either we're going to, in my humble estimation, um, put full-time staff out there that their main purpose is to travel from school to school and garner the support to bring our young people out there, or we aggressively pursue corporate sponsorship uh, to help us move it in a direction we'd like for it to go. Uh, we have, we have uh, uh, personnel out there uh, that work on a part-time basis and um, it has also articulated some desire, I think, to, to improve as well. But uh, Ms. Miller and Mr. Walters are looking at me like, what you, because we've had the conversation several times. It has enormous potential. I just think we need to really put a solid plan in place in order to address it, I'm, 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 you are you are absolutely right, Dr. Gray. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's um, and I think it's important how it's staff, the the kind of staff there, that can actually lead kids in environmental learning, mm -hmm. is so important as well as those who have to maintain it and make it beautiful. But um, either we ought to give it some attention, or we need to make another decision. And I hope that we give it attention. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and again, that seems like something where we might already have some partnerships that exist, like the Food Corps folks and, and Roadmap and a number of others who have those skill sets and maybe even with some convenient AmeriCorps kind of yes, work sir. being done. But there's a lot yes, of possibilities. I agree. We just we really need to we really need to have a staff member assigned whose primary responsibility is doing that. Mm -hmm. Right now we have uh, dedicated but part-time or retired persons that are assisting. We need Could you ask Dr. Definitely. Gray, whoever's, whoever's managing there, is it Buddy somebody? Yes, ma'am. Um, ask him to, I don't mean Buddy Smart, somebody, I'm no, sorry, I don't no, call his last name, yeah. excuse me. Okay. Um, maybe he could come and give us what a typical day is out there, what, you know, and um, what um, what's going on, because half of Jackson, and maybe some people don't even know about this wonderful space that belongs to Jackson Public Schools, and our kids are missing so much. I think we might do one bigger. We have wildly important projects that we are planning for 16, 17. So we can add this, and Margaret and I can wrestle up Buddy and uh, talk a little bit about setting some specific goals and being able to monitor Absolutely. those progress. Yes. Uh, and so that's how you move the needle, is, is to make it happen so that like way. like to move the needle. That's it needs to needle be moved moving. badly. Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you. Mr. Oppenheim. Thanks, Madam President. If I may, just really briefly, uh, for other business, um, something that I think will deeply impact our school district, uh, and I sent a note to you all the other day about the airport, potential airport takeover, and the impact that that could potentially sure. have. Sure not only taken away from the city, but both directly and indirectly taken away from what our kids deserve related to that. 
Um, so I just kind of wanted to put that on everybody's radar uh, without getting too political about Certainly. it, that we have to be really um, aggressive about this particular issue and the impact on the school district. All right, Ms. Miller is, is garnering a little bit of uh, energy around that. Ma'am, you want to report? Yes, and I, I apologize. I've got a couple of things and that slipped my mind, but I had I did get some information on uh, Dr. Gray, uh, Ms. Burton, members of the board. That property is actually in Rankin County, so it does not uh, directly impact the district. Um, the sales tax that is gained there is actually a benefit to the city of Jackson. Uh, the district doesn't share in sales tax revenue. So um, there's no direct financial impact to the, to the city, I mean to the district if it changes. I, I think it does affect, again, the viability of the city mm -hmm. uh, that we certainly support. Um, I think that there's some excellent educational opportunities, I think, that, that may be affected if it changes hands. But uh, I think your question was specific financial impact, and there is no direct financial impact um, that, is, that, that we are benefiting from directly from the airport being in, um, in the city's hands. But there could be indirect, should the authority change and the way things are handled and because of the impact on the city. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's going to affect the city more because, again, it, the city will garner that sales tax of the things that are sold there. We don't share in any sales tax revenue. So it, it, that won't really hurt nor help us financially. Yeah, I'm just concerned because there's all kinds of implications, and even though it's not a direct financial thing, um, I think there's potentially – could be devastating for the city, which does well, directly. Well, we, I mean, I, the, yeah. for the uh, sake of not being political, political like you said, I, uh, let me say, though, that um, we enjoy uh, 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 the Jackson Medgar Evers uh, Airport being under the auspices of our city leadership. Uh, and it is an important part of the uh, culture of our city. I'm trying not to be going too far on the far end because I hadn't talked with you all about it. But we, we, um, we enjoy the privilege of having the city's uh, airport, uh, and, and you know we want to continue that. So we, we you know, will support in the ways we need to support to make sure that that continues. Well said, Dr. Yes, Thank you. Somebody's holding me back. Well, I don't want y'all to get no so, email about me tomorrow. So, <laughs> so, so, so we're not going to, I'm not going to even recognize Dr. Burden. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, I, had, I had one other business yes, um, matter, if I may. Madam President, Board of Trustees, forthcoming. Um, and this is connected a little bit to uh, staff personnel matters. Forthcoming will be the selections of our school principals. Uh, there may be some changes forthcoming in central office personnel. We know there are so, a couple of item, a couple of um, uh, positions that uh, either are interim or like vacant that need to be filled. Uh, and I will caution you already because of the last several years, every time we do this, something comes across your email, you get a phone call about a potential candidate. So please know that the superintendent's office vets all, I receive recommendations from those who report to me on these, <coughs> on these matters. I just wanted you to be uh, apprised and aware that in the coming month, you'll have come across your desk uh, in board materials, uh, recommendations from the superintendent's office on principals and central office staff uh, positions. Thank you. Ms. Burke. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Dr. We have um, a, the administration uh, is has set a briefing to the budget committee. This is the administration's meeting. They have an agenda of several topics, and uh, that date, <coughs> Ms. Miller, is uh, pretty close. Now, there was a meeting that I requested of the budget committee on discussions about the foundation and for some reason that hadn't been said but I think Ms. Miller's now in charge of setting that it, it has the 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 first meeting is February 25th 
um, which is our Dr. Gray and I mean, our meeting, and the next official meeting uh, with on the foundation is Thursday, March 3rd at 1130. Yeah, we've got your emails, but uh, yes, those sir. are two upcoming Thank you. meetings of your board finance committee. Thank you, Dr. Burden. <coughs> uh, do we have any items for, yes, <laughs> executive session? Yes. I'll entertain a motion to consider. Close the meeting. I'm sorry. So That's moved. right. We'll, we'll, we'll close the meeting first. Second. It's been moved and second that we close the meeting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Those are